Yo, what's up everybody? Jay Ping checking in live, man. Respect by region. We're actually at the Flower Expo Exhibit Hall A showroom floor. I've got a very special guest, Steve Ripperip, CEO, founder of Tat Firm. Got it? Yeah. Awesome. We're on the North American Weed Tour, day four. We're going to talk a little bit about marketing today, specifically retention, right? Yeah. You, Steve. Well, first off, thank you. Appreciate you being here. Of course. Awesome. I love marketing. I love data. You have a very particular niche. Uh, it encompasses a varieties of marketing, varieties of data, different technology. And it's all about not just acquiring customers, but retaining them and growing that and extracting things from that, right? Of course. And so I really want to understand and peel back some of the layers there and kind of bring clarity or even just light to some of these various things that go into what you do. Um, first and foremost, who are you? What is tech for me? Yeah, Tech Firm was really born out of my obsession with data and trying to figure out how to make a difference with these dispensaries. Mm -hmm. I spent, uh, I've only been in cannabis for like five years, which some people can be a lot. Some people it's it's still in yeah. the But during that time, I worked with a lot of CEOs and owners of these stores, and there's a lot of gaps in terms of what they could hire for. And so, you know, with limited budgets, you can only focus on hiring good bud tenders, but yeah. good staff that are going to treat the people and customers right. But then they're lacking a lot of the back end stuff that really helps boost and grow a company. What are some of those things? Yeah. So it's like, even like on the admin side, getting really good financials, getting that all set, figured out, having good controllers, uh, good financial statements, understand how you're actually performing every month. But then on the other end, you know, there's one part, which is that, which is knowing how you're doing. And then the other part, which is increasing how you're doing. Yeah. That's where marketing comes in. And a lot of stores, they, they focus very specifically on acquiring new customers and so they get on these platforms and they spend loads of money uh tens of thousands of dollars every month trying yeah. to get new customers and some of them i've seen flop where they spend ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month and they didn't get a single customer or very little or they rent customers it could be a super saturated marketplace yeah and i'm gonna just start weed maps the leaf lease yep tons of customers going there for specific things to identify stores or deals but then they they just are there for that one purpose and so you're fighting for rented customers that are distracted at the end of the day. Exactly. Yeah. So when I started to dive into the data, it, which no one had looked at some of these statistics, I was, I was shocked. So the most shocking statistic to me was out of all the dispensaries customers, 40 to 60% only ever shopped once and never came back again. Wow. So, and it's consistent on the people. Yeah. All stores, all states, between 40 and 60%, which means that's about half of your customers. Just bouncing are, everywhere. Yeah. Coming in, coming right back out. Wow. And over 80% of those customers left without giving an email. So you have no way to contact them. And so, again, what a lot of stores do is they have the top of funnel where they get customers to come in, but they don't do anything to retain them and hold them. So they have this bucket that leaks and they're pouring more and more water and just leaking right out. Yeah. Potentially so, faster, potentially leaking even at greater velocity. Yeah. Right? Especially the stores that, you know, do a great job with their, their staff, their in-store experience. They have a great selection of products and brands. Their butt tenders and staff are friendly and very welcoming, but they're still going to have the problem of people coming in and going right back out if they don't find a way to recapture them. Absolutely. So that's where, like, again, I didn't set out to figure out how to retain customers. I just looked at the data and figured, holy shit, here's we're looking at gaps. Yeah, we're looking at data and solve gaps and, and performance errors, right? What's funny is people in cannabis and a lot of industries, we get some form of success we get some form of data point and we put we, we that's our benchmark and then it's like we're kind of just happy to keep it somewhere around there like losing it we don't want to lose we don't go backwards but then we don't necessarily know how to get it like into that next level right going back to having strong financials for the today but then planning for the tomorrow tends to be something that we don't really have enough time for the key word in cannabis right is bandwidth <laughs> they don't have enough bandwidth for these things it comes down to recruiting and money and time a bunch of issues that just stem from business this is all just business issues when you're working with these retailers, what are you coaching them to do when bandwidth is the problem, but they know that they've got a leaky bucket? Yeah. So the first thing we do is we get in and we look at the data we figure out, okay, and where are these numbers, especially compared to the benchmarks of all of our other stores. Okay. Since we've worked with over 30 stores in five states, we have a lot of data to compare against saying, okay, if most stores are between 40 and 60, where are you? Are you on the low end? Are you on the high end? Yeah. And then that'll inform some more strategy. But, you know, as we know, in retail cash is king but your list is the queen. And so you have to build their list. That's phone numbers and emails. Yeah. Again, that's how we contact them, not only to bring them back, but to retain them over the long term. Mm -hmm. And so we look at, you know, key retention metrics for these stores, such as what's the opt-in rate. 
how many people are coming in and converting to give you their information. Yeah. How many are opting in? Uh, we look at retention rate. How many are actually staying with your company month, month over month? Loyalty rate, a lost customer rate. There's all these different metrics that we look at. It tells a figure. story. These numbers, the what it's about, the numbers are, are, are uh, attributed to. It, it paints a picture. And the more of those that you get, it paints a fuller picture of where you're at and how maybe where you're not. I think that's huge. Yeah. People look at where you're at and they're like, ah, oh, but really what it says is what, you, what you're not doing, where you could be in a lot of ways, depending on your perspective, right? You know, I always, I come from sports. I use the word plays, playbooks, right? Coaching, I'm just thinking off, offense is one thing and defense is another. You know, dispensaries that aren't doing anything, but dispensaries are opening around them, you're on the defensive. Thanks. So customers are being acquired and retained while you're not even, while you're doing nothing, it's happening against you. So. And cannabis, a good defense is not doing nothing. It's do, it's, it's going on the offensive to retain, yeah. to acquire, to build relationships, be in the community. Going back to this word plays and playbook, in the tact firm playbook that you guys have, and a variety of plays, these different data points, these different regions, all this this decision making and creativity that can go into it. What are some of these plays that you guys coach brands into doing to help acquire and keep customers around? Yeah, so let's just start with the basic. What's the simple one you see every time? So we actually have a, uh, we're building this knowledge base. We call it the retention playbook. I love it. This is pregnant. Exactly that. I love it. <laughs> and I talk about this a lot on LinkedIn and to a lot of people because passionate about it. I'm a little obsessed with about it too. So uh, I'll tell you exactly how we do it. And this is how we build our retention engine. And we do this because you retain customers. They're your million dollar customers. Yeah. Over the long term, even depending on your store size, Within a year, your loyal customers and retained customers are going to spend over a million dollars. Over multiple years, if you're a smaller store, same thing. Collectively. Yeah. So these are very, very valuable customers. And this is our exact playbook of what we do with our stores. So first, we get in and we look at the data, like I mentioned, retention metrics, figure out where the most opportunities are to bring in a ton of where they're at today, what they're not doing, and how we can yep. jump up that. Hey, you guys like aren't getting very many people to opt in. Here's what we can do with the butt tenders, the staff, here's some materials and what we can provide for them, some training so they can start opting people in. Yeah. For example, one of the stores we work with in Ann Arbor, Michigan here, uh, every week they're opting in about 13 to 20 people. That's not very many. No. We got them some information, some flyers to put out the POS system, some talking points for the butt tenders. They went from 50 to 20 a week to 70 to 90 a week. Yeah, that's huge. Just from some very simple education. Yeah. Bring it top of mind. Being that, intentional and being consistent through communication. Yeah, yeah. Right? That experience. People talk about user experience and, and experience online and digital often, right? But if you don't do that in person too, then your your then, then data is incredibly reflective if you're not gonna Hello, sir. Welcome. Good to see you again. Yeah. Or would you like to use your points today? That's took seven seconds. But if you're not getting told to do that or you're just not getting consistently brought up then yeah, 13 to 15 a week isn't so hot, right? Oh. We're t I'm used to doing stuff, getting 70 to 80 a day, if you can do it right. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. There's all, there's like five different touch points where someone can prompt a customer, right? Okay. When they check in at reception, when they're in the waiting room, when they get paired with a butt tender to start shopping, yeah. when they go to check out, then we can take it further. We can put a to-go card, a card in their to-go bag, and there's other ways to, there's so many different places. I've gotten text messages as soon as I got in my car that said, thank you for shopping with There you go. Yeah. So powerful that they literally thanked me. It's like the, it's like the homie being like, yo, it was good to see you again. Thanks for stopping by and supporting me. There's just something as simple as that was like, damn, it was a little creepy at first because I wasn't used to that level of service. Yeah. But then at the same time, it was like, okay, cool. Now I got a direct line to the place I just went. And I thought that was super powerful. So it goes back to these touch points you're talking about. Yeah. So you guys have a playbook. So first off, a retention engine, some of these words that I'm capturing, retention engine with featuring a playbook that has different things that you can enact or integrate. I use the word infuse because cannabis yeah, infuse yeah. into these people's businesses to help get better results. So we just talked about some touch points at the retail to maybe just juice a little bit more acquisition, customer information, right? In that instance, what's another, you know, what's another layer of, of this for the retention conversation? Yeah. So that's step one. Step two is we start to recover revenue and we target customers that haven't been in the store in over 60 days. Now, again, we look at the data and bring them back. About 30 to 50% of your cus current customers haven't shopped in over 60 days. Wow. Again, huge portion of that. And, you know, a, a good amount, you, they have their emails and we get that way to contact them. So let's hit those people up. It's what we did to, uh, in the last two months, one of our stores here in Michigan 
we brought them over $96,000 of brand new revenue in just two months by targeting those customers, yeah. bringing them back in. So another big opportunity there. And then the third thing we do is now that we have a, a list that's building up, we engage with that list, send them weekly emails based on what they purchase, how they purchase and when they purchase. Segmentations. Yep, segmentations. Mm -hmm. So again, look through the data and you figure out how to segment that based on all these different factors. And then you'll notice over time, those retention metrics increase. You get more people coming back, purchasing more frequently. You know, and again, another thing with the data is that all stores, the purchase frequency is about 10 to 30 days for the average purchase for customers. You get some people that purchase every week, right? Every two weeks, people that purchase about every month. But once you start going past 30 days, it drops off significantly. People are focused in the 10 to 30 days. And after that, they're not shopping as much because they might be going to other dispensaries, checking other places out. And so you have to be able to keep them, retain them. Yeah. That's why I target over 60 days, give them some time, then keep them back in. The fourth thing and final thing we do is we get first time customers to return. We try to get them to return at least five times. That builds habits and consistency in their daily schedule, weekly schedule to get to your store, you know, logistics. If they're going to come after work or on a lunch break yeah. or whatever else, people have busy daily lives and you got to hit them up often enough to where you capture the moment that they're ready to come and buy some weed. Yeah. Because they might have bought on Monday and they don't need anything Wednesday or Thursday, but here comes Friday. They need it for the weekend and they're getting off of work. And if you, they get off work at five o'clock, between four and five, and you send them a message between two and four, you're reminding them, hey, just stop by on your way home. It's convenient. Yeah. You're Help. fitting yourself into their schedule, which actually adds value yeah. versus being salesy, right? And so it goes back into true psychology based on the segmentations and understanding your customer profile. For people that are watching this, it's important that you guys try to get a better understanding of the people you sell to currently. Once you get a, the idea of who you sell to currently or who's just around you in your neighborhood, then you can start segmentating. And for the, again, segmentation, you guys, there's, there's a million ways to describe it, but the reality is, is, you know, it could be age, it could be interest, it could be location, it could be frequencies. There's so many different I'll call it advanced reporting yeah. that you can select these days that even if you just screw around and click around on these things, you can learn a little, quite a bit about your customers, let alone working with experts, right? But the reality is, you guys, this industry is bandwidth driven. It's cost compressed. There's not a lot of money and investment dollars just flowing in, allowing us to have burn rates that last forever, right? Just burning through cash. And so you guys got to be efficient. The margins, the risk, taxes that come in every year, there's a lot of moving parts. And so... If you guys are already spending money in cannabis and retail and you feel remotely at all like you're not getting the results you should, you should have a call with Steve and look at some of these, the analytics of what you're already doing, right? And maybe get a better understanding of what you're not and a direction to going, right? Yeah, I mean, we even give free estimates on what we can recover for stores. So stores reach out to us and say, hey, we're gonna, we think we have some problems with the retention. And so we get into their systems and we look do an estimate and say, nah. all right, over the next six months, here's what we can recover for you. And we're, we're very confident we can hit that. We pick numbers that we can basically guarantee that we'll hit. And that could be a lot of money. For example, uh, just since April, so April, May, June, July, we're three months in, and we've already recovered over $691,000 for dispensaries here in Michigan and on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And just in July alone, we recovered over $261,000. And everyone's really happy because what if you added that to your store? Some of these stores were getting $20,000 a month, uh, $40,000 a month, and that snowballs and grows. What does that do for your store? So you can add another even $10,000, $30,000 to your store yeah. revenue. You know, I mean, if you're a dispensary, your... I'll say I don't have a marketing budget, but yet you have customers, not any number of customers not coming back in a, beyond that 30 day window. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? Where are you you're just throwing money out the window at this point and lighting it on fire, right? And so, again, the dispensaries, the retailers that are out there, you guys are already doing marketing. You're already listing yourself on services. You're already doing some version of SEO. You have to have a website. It has to be compliant. You guys are leaving money on the table by not taking the free estimate and giving Steve the chance. And so I just want to really encourage you guys, 
leverage your resources, get on these calls, show up to the meetings, get a better understanding of how to serve your customers. And whoever you guys are that are working in these jobs and these retail and these MSOs, whatever it is, you'll find that your job security is a little bit better and you'll maybe get some more money in your pockets if you make more impactful data-driven decisions. Yeah, we right. are great with marketing teams too. Like the head of the marketing, director of marketing will reach out to us and we'll say, hey, we, we do a great job on our social media. We have SEO and acquisition, but we don't know anything about retention. Yeah. So no one's really dove into that. And so we work with them and we figure out, okay, what are you guys paying to acquire a customer? What's your customer acquisition cost? Seems that, really multiple don't have they, have they have no idea. They don't even know what the equation yeah. is, or I've never heard of that. They just only got to do it. It's crazy. So they're like, oh, we spent $10,000 on weed mass. How many customers did, customers did you get? We got 100 customers. What did they spend? About 100 bucks each. Okay. So that's, no. you spent $10,000 to make $10,000. But really, what's your gross profit on that? Say 50% piece of margins. So you just lost 50%, right? You just lost $5,000 to make $10,000, $5,000. It makes no sense. But what we do with that is, okay, you acquired them. Maybe you lost money on them, but how do we retain them? And then we end up getting to a point where they're not losing money on those customers anymore. They're breaking even or ideally making money. And so we pair really well with acquisition and marketing teams, and we help them understand where they're at and how they can do better. Cool, man. Steve Ripperip, Tag Firm, tactfully getting you guys where you need to be for cannabis retail, marketing, data-driven, specifically with customer attention. You guys, give them, give them a call, reach out. Get on, the, get on the conversation, ask these data-driven questions, get a better understanding of your guys' you know, the consumers, the, the, the locals, you know, real estate info, all this stuff goes into understanding you know, how to really sell to these areas. So reach out, let me know what you guys think in the comments, okay? Steve, I appreciate you being on the, this interview today. We're at the Flower Expo, Lansing, Michigan. We're, what, what regions, what states do you guys service? Oh man, we're still in five states. We have a big presence in Michigan here, a lot of the East Coast. New Jersey, especially, it's booming. Massachusetts, our stores there are doing really well. We have a store in Oregon and one in Vermont. So we're, we're expanding, we're growing. We have lots of data in all these different markets. Beautiful. Reach out if you're in any of those markets. And anybody that's supporting RMR and a fan of us, if you're in any other markets, reach out to me. I'll get you guys in contact. You guys, fourth day North American lead tour. Steve, we're here. Flower Expo. We're doing it. This is the first one, man, here in Michigan. You enjoying yourself? Oh, yeah. It's been valuable. Great to meet everyone here and see all the excitement, the brands, the retailers. There's a, quite a few retailers walking around yeah. the, last, the last two days. Huh? I was, I, not to say I was surprised, I just didn't know what to expect. So, you guys, thank you. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you on the next interview, okay? North American Weed Tour, Flower Expo, Tag Firm, Steve Ripper Rip. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.